Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Xiao Yilu. I come from the Ohio State University. So my co-presenter, uh, Dr. D.K. Panda, uh, because of some personal uh, constraints at the last minute, so he cannot come. So I will cover the talk, our talk. So today I'm going to uh, present our recent work on accelerating up OpenStack Swift with RDMA technology for building efficient HPC clouds. So this outline of today's talk, I will first briefly introduce uh, what kind of background or why we do this work, and then what kind of problems we are trying to solve, and what kind of design we are, uh, we are proposing, and how much performance gains actually uh, we can achieve for different benchmarks and applications. And then we, we want to conclude uh, this talk later. So many of you may know that these days, a lot of exciting and high performance technologies, hardware, te hardware uh, technologies are actually uh, being used in many, many uh, cloud instances. For example, uh, the multi-core, uh, multi many-core technologies, accelerators, Intel Xeon Fine, as well as large memory nodes, new, new memory like NVM, those kind of things. And another exciting thing is the high performance networks, such as InfiniBand and Rocky. So this type of networks have been uh, heavily used in the HPC cluster now these days the HPC cloud are also trying to uh, utilize these uh, new uh, networks. Another thing is like a, a single load uh, virtualization. This is, has been uh, proposed several years, so it can be used to uh, high performance, scalable, utilize your uh, PCI devices in uh, different virtual machines. So for different storages, for example, like SSD, NVMe SSD, and then uh, like Swift, this kind of all parallel system, like uh, distributed file system, Ceph, this kind of uh, different storage services also being widely used in the cloud. So to summary, what kind of uh, questions or what kind of uh, problems we are trying to address in this talk is that we see there are two different things. One, from the provider side, you see a lot of interesting networking available in the cloud. InfiniBand, uh, Rocky, this gives you a very good performance, like. The, the latest HDR InfiniBand car can give you 200 Gbps per second bandwidth and then less than one microsecond point-to-point -point communication over uh, two nodes. And also another exciting thing is InfiniBand or Rocky gives you another interesting or important feature called remote direct memory access. I believe most of you know about DMA. DMA is like access your memory, bypass your CPU, right? RDMA means that you, request, you, you can extend the DMA DMA concept to the remote side. You can directly access remote node memory without involve the CPU in the remote side. So you can directly write the data or read the data from remote memory. That's a very exciting feature so that you can achieve truly one-sided communication compared to send and receive, okay? That's why it, it gives you a lot of uh, performance benefit. And on the other hand, if you take a look at the uh, cloud uh, storage systems, let's take example like Swift, we see that it gives you a lot of big capacities. However, the performance and scalability is still a big problem. Uh, we'll take a look, let, let's take a look at what kind of uh, design or architecture of a Swift lo looks like. So Swift is like a uh, distributed cloud-based object storage service. Uh, it, deploy, it can be deployed of, as part of the OpenStack installation. It can also be de deployed as a standalone component to uh, store your data. So uh, user requests can come from anywhere worldwide. So it's through the HTTP request, something like that, and then the data the request may come to the proxy server. And then there are multiple proxy server being deployed to uh, handle your request. And then the data actually is saved or is, uh, served from the multiple object, uh, object servers. And then the ring component is actually used to handle the metadata. So this Swift can be used to uh, handle a lot of uh, different use cases. For example, you can uh, run big data applications. You can do software data backup. You can also uh, store the data, uh, virtual machine or uh, containers images. So this is the this is good, but the problem is that the default Swift architecture or default Swift implementation design still take advantage of the uh, traditional TCP/IP or socket-based communication, which is not high performance. Okay, the reason is because I, I mentioned earlier the RDMA technology can do much faster than that. Okay, so with this, we actually trying to uh, address some kind of challenge like this. So the, we see there are two problems in the, in the Swift architecture. The first one is the proxy server may be a bottleneck because a lot of requests can, should come to the proxy server first. The second thing is that 
all objects upload or download operations are actually based on uh, TCP IP socket communication with network intensive. So the question is that can an RDMA based approach uh, benefit this, this design? And then how can high performance and scalable RDMA based communication schemes be designed to improve the overall SWIFT performance? And also we hope we, can, we don't want to change the SWIFT API. So if you take a look at the proposed design, we actually did two things, uh, two different type of designs. The first one we call the client uh, oblivious designs. There's no change required for the client side. The other one is we pr also propose metadata meta server-based design, which can direct do the communication between the client and the object servers to bypass the proxy ser server. Okay, and uh, like, I, like I said earlier, all the socket-based communication, we replace it with RDMA-based protocol. RDMA typically implemented with verbs uh, APIs, but traditional TCP IP you can implement with sockets. So that's why we utilize native verbs APIs to re-implement the communication substrate of uh, OpenStack Swift. And uh, some other things like provide max overlapping between communication and I.O. We also uh, have done some things. Let's ta first take a look at the first design, the client uh, operators designs. So for this design, there's no change required on the client side. If you see this, the client side, the, 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 the blue lines is actually the default path. So still goes through the TCP IP uh, communication protocol. But if you see the red ones, the red ones is the communication path between proxy server to the object storage servers. So that they, there we actually changed to the RDMA based communication protocol. Okay, so but at this design, even though we improve the backend data access through the RDMA, however, the proxy server part, the blue lines part, still the bottleneck. And then later on, we are thinking that in some cases, because for example, if you build some private clouds or some clouds under your control, uh, and the, in that case, if the like the performance of, is a, is a uh, issue for you, then we probably can actually bypass the uh, proxy server, right? So that you can directly communicate between the client and the object storage servers. So in this way, we actually can improve the performance a lot. So in this, in this design, we say that this, this uh, proxy server is no longer a bottleneck. And we actually will present this paper in next week in uh, Spain, CC Grid Conference. There's a mo more detailed designs because there's only 10, 10 minutes talk. I want to uh, go into more details. Um, I'm happy to like, uh, share some of the performance observations we, uh, we have. So first of all, we actually did some breakdown. Like uh, we uh, break down the time spent in default Swift pass and the design one we proposed and design two we proposed. Obviously, we see that for design two, because you bypass the proxy server, so your communication time can significantly reduced by almost 4x compared with the default scheme. There are two contributions. One is RDMA-based protocol. The second one is the bypassing the proxy server. That's for design two. If you see that uh, for the put operation, it's almost 4x. And then for gate operation, it's almost a 3x. Okay? This is the breakdown for the put gate. If you take a look at the uh, overall ev evaluation with the put gate operations with uh, different uh, message size, we see that like uh, for a large, fairly large uh, object size like 5 GB, we can actually reduce the latency, put the latency around 50% and reduce the get latency almost 70%. So this is like a basic operations, but sometimes we want to run some uh, big data workloads on top of Swift. If we can do that, that will be fantastic because these days a lot of requirements from the big data analytics side. So this actually, we compare three things. We compare, first, we run Hadoop word count on top of HDFS. Second bar is like a, a Swift FS, which can run HDFS workload on top of Swift directly. But that's default implementation. It still, still goes through the Swift, default Swift architecture. And then the uh, gray one is our proposed Swift X, uh, Swift with RDMA and bypassing the, uh, the uh, proxy server. What do we see that? Compared with the Swift FS, we see maximally we can achieve almost 83% improvement for Hadoop workloads. And then compared with HDFS, we can achieve around 70 or 70, 60 to 70% 70, uh, 70 improvement. But here, no doubt for HDFS, the data needs to be copied from the uh, Swift. The reason is because uh, if you de deploy another HDFS cluster, the data actually will be in Swift. You need to copy, copy in and copy out. So with this, let me quickly conclude the talk, uh, the lighting talk. So the first of all, what we did is we uh, want to share that we analyzed Swift architecture and identified the major bottlenecks in the Swift default architecture. And then we proposed the two designs to accelerate Swift performance to, uh, to improve the, and the scalability. So this will, the two designs will be 
uh, applicable for uh, different kind of scenarios. For one case, if you don't want to change your application, you can use the first design, like a client uh, ability first design. If you want to, if you more care about performance, actually you can use a second design. So we designed some RDMA-based communication uh, framework for Swift, and the evaluation results look very promising. So we are trying to evaluate with more application scenarios and support F3 and the POSIX APS in the future. And that this design will be publicly available soon in our uh, uh, website. So tomorrow I will have another talk, talk about HPC clouds uh, to, with MPA and the OpenStack and SRV and how to support the migration with RSV based in VDBand clusters. So let me thank the all the uh, sponsors. These are our uh, group members who uh, work hard with, uh, for all these things. And then thank you. I'm happy to take short questions. Okay, go ahead. So we are not, actually we say bypass uh, the perk server kind of things, but we, we, are, not, we are not totally bypass that. We, the actual data, pa data pass, the performance critical data pass, actually we bypass that. But we still we need some data exchange with the ring and the perk servers. So I'm happy to talk with you later uh, because they're saying we need to stop. Yeah, yeah. thank you.